100 dupes for 100 cycles or how far can we get until the first duplicate dies. I'm putting both of these options out here right now because it would be an absolute miracle if you can actually manage to get to the 100th cycle. And even if we did not, we can say we made it to cycle XYZ. So if you ever want to try this challenge for yourself, you at least have some kind of orientation. First try cycle 2, second try cycle 3 and so on. Step 1. Planet Selection we start on a standard big terra asteroid, whether it is the base game or the DLC, doesn't matter here. As for mods, I only use the Plyos mod and some quality of life mods that mute the sounds, otherwise they will drive me crazy. Step 2. The 3 starting dupes. For the 3 starter dupes I choose 2 researchers and 1 husbandry dupe. I would have loved to get an advanced researcher duplicate here, but I couldn't roll one. You have to keep in mind that with 100 dupes we probably will already have dupes with a hard and super hard digging skill. Maybe even a cook. Step 3. Preparations. Here we are and this is our planet. Now I will spawn in the remaining 97 duplicates with the help of the dev mode. This could have an effect on our care packages. Maybe they get screwed up a little bit. But after spawning in the dupes, we continue with the blessful task of renaming all of the duplicates. I did name our little base dwellers according to the patron names and the members of the YouTube channel. The remaining duplicates got numbers as names. It will help you survive longer if you divide your dupes into multiple schedules. This also helps reducing the amount of bathrooms we need. I chose 4 schedules, each with 25 dupes in it. Then we save the game and then reload. Step 4. Math. Unpausing the game will cause the dupes to start breathing. With this many dupes that has to be at least 10 kilograms of oxygen per second, not assuming that we have diverse lungs dupes, meaning they need less oxygen, or mouth breather dupes that use up way more oxygen. Same goes for the food. The dupes will need roughly more than 1000 calories per dupe per cycle which comes to a stunning 100,000 calories per cycle. The dupes don't need to eat every single cycle though. We can have some of the dupes eat only every 3 cycles, which would mean they need 3000 calories that cycle. Let us hope we don't lose a few dupes this early in the game. That would be awkward. Cycle 1. Power, Oxygen and Research Oxygen deficiency is the main issue in the first cycle. And even though it is counterintuitive, we will spread our oxygen a little bit thinner. Because dupes that are holding their breath aren't using any oxygen. So having the same oxygen over a larger area is actually helpful at this point in time. Instead of just having a few tiles of highly concentrated oxygen. For cycle 1 I prioritized building two independent power grid setups. That supply our research stations and most importantly the algae diffusers with the necessary power needed. As soon as the research stations are operable, researching anything that gives us food in the future has priority for the research. We do have the microbe musher, but if we don't build farms pretty early on, you probably will lose all of your duplicates at cycle 9 or 10. After that I already planned the pitcher pumps, which we will need in upcoming cycles to bottle the water for the mush bars that we will be producing. With the first oxygen diffusers being built, we should survive long enough to finish the next two power grids that supply the rest of the necessary oxygen diffusers. One diffuser can supply around 5 duplicates, so we need 20 of them. Those will use up around 11 kg of algae per second, which is 6.6 .6 tons per cycle. In reality that number is probably a bit lower, because the dupes often need to hold their breath and we still do have oxalite lying around, which gives off a little bit of oxygen over time. As you can see I even added 2 latrines for the plus 1 morale bonus. I deactivated the wash basin though, since we don't need to waste any water on that. With power in mind, the next research focused on the coal generator, hopefully helping us reduce the duplicate labor on the hamster wheels. I used that moment to check out all the duplicates for any special skills. We do have some artists, super duper hot diggers, super hot diggers, number 73 is a cook and that can be helpful in the future, a critter rancher, a hot digger and more artists. Even one that is pretty skilled in masterworks, electric engineering, bedside manner and plumbing are also covered. With that knowledge I distributed the priorities. I had to say distributed for like 10 times to get this freaking words. With this first oxygen production, the dupe priorities and the food research out of the way, we can use the rest of cycle 1 to plan the barracks, which will give us an additional plus 1 morale for the dupes. 5 times 5 beds to the left and 6 times 4 beds to the right would give us a combined number of 49 beds for the dupes, which means at least a few dupes don't have to sleep on the floors. Oh, wait, the first dupe is already suffocating. Let's check that out. Ah, uh, it's just a few numbered dupes being unreasonable in the water. <laughs> 
Our four power grids supply the existing oxygen diffusers, but we are not at 20 pieces yet. Let us add a few more down here. And while we are at it, prepare the food production. Another power grid and five microbe mushers to start with. Further up in the base, we managed to break through to a water pocket, allowing us to merge it with our storage in the lower base area. The power research has been finished, and with that, I decide to focus on advanced research first. Then, even before the buildings are powered, I queued infinite mush bars for the microbe mushers. Cycle 2 Food production, research and farming. With this we arrive at cycle 2. Oh and look at what we got here. A glow stick dupe, ruining the day of whoever sleeps besides them. <laughs> to not have the dupe staff at the end of cycle 3, we need to have the food production up and running. Now. So for goodness sake build this cable. There we go. Now let's check out who the glow stick dupe was. Oh hey, feral kitten. Feral Kitten is the cook in most of our bases. For some reason, that just always happens to be the cook. Planning the water storage, starting the research for ranching, more digging orders and another food production power setup later. This is how the base looks at the first quarter of cycle 2. Well, this is better than most of my bases after cycle 30. More digging and building orders as well as the advanced research buildings queued we can finally start with the farming, after we manage to get number 1 down here safely. There we go. With the farming tile researched, I'm planning on using the free space in the middle for mealwood. Midway through cycle 2 we can start adding more beds, so the rest of the lovely folk doesn't have to sleep on the floor anymore. And then we finish the cycle with the air system research and more farming tiles. We should be safe from a death by suffocation, at least until we run out of algae. Food doesn't look very good though. Hey, we found some Paku! Cycle 3 Irrigation, Research, Kitchen and Saving Dupes In Cycle 3 we found some Paku, outlined a new room, replaced the battery, wandered about number 47 and started the toilet research. After adding a water irrigation system to the bristle berries, an expanding set system to drop water in the top floors as well, I figured for this to work a bit of automation research is needed. More farming and a new room were planned and the gas pump research started. Then I added the light for the bristle berries. In this challenge you can never have enough farms, food or berries. We survived long enough for the first care package to arrive. The only acceptable choice sadly though are the pufflet eggs. To use them we would need an electric grill, a cook and an egg cracker. But we do have a starving dupe so we have to take care of that first. And here's the tip for you if you have starving dupes in one of your challenges. Either give the respective dupe or the whole shift a temporary downtime slot so they have enough time to eat or forbid food for everyone but that specific duplicant. Solution 1 did a trick here. We are still nowhere near a stable food source. If you are wondering why I haven't started the research for any advanced tech yet, we do not have any skill points. Hence I needed to finish a lot of temporarily unnecessary research first, before being able to give the researcher dupes the advanced research skill point. Bringing us back to the dupe selection. It would have been just so awesome to get a duplicate with the advanced research in the first place. Not sure that is even possible though. At the end of cycle 3 it was time to rescue the dupes again. Food production is super tight and number 53 is starving. Number 30 is trying to steal the mush bar away from them. A lot and a lot of micromanaging the dupes later. Don't steal it. I fucking swear don't steal it. Cannot reach food. Don't lie to me. You're just standing there. Here. There it is. Go and eat it. Go and eat it. I had to go back to method 2. Forbid food for everyone but number 53. But at that moment he already ate it. <sighs> Cycle 4. The reason for the food shortage and saving dupes. We immediately started adding more food production to the mix and very importantly digging up and collecting more algae. Cannot forget about the oxygen production. And why is nobody doing that? Work parent. Then I figured out why we are not producing any food. Not permitted? I disallowed cooking for all of the dupes. Is this a cooking skill? No. I think that using the microbe musher was not a cooking skill a few updates ago. Luckily I did notice and didn't forbid it for any longer than that. It is a surprise we are even alive at this point. I want to, want to, they can get up there. Then we saved number 68. Tip, be prepared that if you open the consumables or vital skills, your PC will suffer and come to a stuttering halt. A quick pause on the glow stick dupe. More glowing dupes. How many freaking glowing dupes do we have? 
number four, still number four, okay, that's fine. After which we needed to rescue number 53, again. Then build a few farm tiles, scout out the future electrolyzer area and build more microbe mushers. Cycle 5 and 6, spawn preparation and the first skill points. Cycle 5 starts with us having to rescue number 53 for the third time. Can't take your eyes off that one. Taking a look at our base, this is how far we are at cycle 5. 50 beds and barracks to the left, 49 to the right and we have 4 small farming areas, 3 mush bar production setups and 2 toilet areas. We can use the rest of cycle 5 to plan ahead our future self-powered oxygen module, SPOM in short. I will use the hydro setup cause we don't want the oxygen production to be hindered by pressure. Each electrolyzer can supply 8.8 .8 dupes. Keeping in mind that we probably have mouth breathers that use up a lot more oxygen than a regular dupe, we need at least 100 divided by 8.8 .8 .8 equals 11.36 period, so roughly 12 electrolyzer. Those will then use up 12 kg of water per second. I am going with a 2 times 6 electrolyzer setup here. The food production is finally running. With this we should have a stable food source until we run out of dirt or water. And the oxygen production is safe until we run out of algae. We arrived at a point where the food is safe and the oxygen is safe. At least until the aforementioned resources run out. In order to prepare us a bit of refined metal for smart batteries and better wires, I thought a rock crusher could come in handy. We grabbed us an advanced researcher. Or two. Then we got lucky and grabbed 3 hedge eggs. At this point in time the skill points came flying in. Now we have a lot of skill points, well one per dupe to distribute. With this we do have a few cycles to prepare an alternative oxygen source that no longer relies on the algae. Future Luma here. This also would have been a good time to prepare an alternative food solution as well. Cycle 7 and 8. Water filtration, harvest, carbon skimming. Cycle 7 was used to continue this bomb. Add a few floors and pitcher pumps, while cycle 8 was used for water filtration. Even though we don't have any oxygen problems, we do have carbon dioxide issues. We had to take care of the carbon dioxide accumulation. We solved that by adding a carbon skimmer next to the water filtration system. If we would not have researched the farm tiles in the first cycle and built most of them in the second cycle, we would not be able to get our first harvest right now, meaning the next cycle could have spilled doom for us. Cycle 9 and 10. Pee everywhere and liquid logging the spawn. Cycle 9 was when the dam broke. Dam being the duped bladder restraint. After peeing on the floor of the food production area, a lot of the bedrooms and probably the water supply. All because the toilets were clogged. Maybe because of the wrong priorities or not enough dirt, we focused the dupe's attention on topping up the electrolyzers with polluted water and regular water. Then we cleaned up the debris. After that we researched the hydrogen generators and the heavy wet joint plates for the spawn setup. Cycle 11 and 12. More spawn stuff. The base progression continued by correcting the water filtration bridge setup as well as upgrading the batteries. Let's check how far the spawn is at the moment. Still being built and progressing slowly. Too slow for my taste though. The oxygen is still fine but our algae reserves will run out very soon. Reminder, we do need around 11 kilograms per second which is 6.6 .6 tons per cycle. And we are using up 100,000 calories each cycle as well. I do have no clue how much we do produce. Never checked, just winged it. Cycle 12 was used to progress the electrolyzer setup even more and collect a few more seeds so that we can switch from mush bars to other food sources very soon. At least that is what I hoped. Cycle 13, 14 and 15. Starving and peeing dupes. This cycle immediately starts with us having to rescue another starving dupe while having 250,000 calories. What went wrong here? Hmm, apparently just bad timing. Let us keep an eye on the warning messages. Give this construction order here a priority yellow. Literally. This should help finally finish the electrolyzer part of the swamp. At the end of cycle 13, number 51 decided to annoy me by trapping themselves while on the search for some algae. A quick rescue later, I laid out the design for the oxygen piping. In cycle 14, we added the hydrogen generators, fixed the wires, cleaned up or drained the accumulated polluted water. Cycle 15 was focused on adding the piping to the hydrogen generators as well as adding the remaining generators. Cycle 16, 17 and 18. Running out of algae, neglecting the food production to finish the spawn layout. In cycle 16 we finished the piping layout and surrounding insulation, adding the filtration to clean the polluted water to clean water and then prepared the water supply for the spawn. 
With this we can produce oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen will then be burned in the generators and we use that power in everything else, but mostly to power the system itself. At this point in time I noticed it might be wise to replenish our algae supply. All the good excavation areas have already been dug out, only the slime lung spots are left, cycle 17, powering the pumps to create the initial vacuum for the spawn. I created some spaghetti pipes to pump the oxygen throughout the base and changed a water outlet and gas outlet here and there. Now one of the first doomsday issues has arrived. We actually ran out of clean water for the food production. I didn't even notice. We do have lots and lots of water but none of it is clean. Which means we arrived at the point that we have mentioned in cycle 5 and 6. The food production is finally running. With this we should have a stable food source until we run out of dirt or water. Meaning we need to siphon off a bit of clean water from this system and make it dupe accessible to create more mush bars. With this system here we could achieve that. And what is this salt water? Why? Well, time to research a solution for that. We finish off cycle 18 with another oxygen diffuser. Here where the carbon dioxide is too dense for the dupes to actually breathe correctly. And then we had to rescue another dupe. And wait, get down here. Cycle 19, 20 and 21, starting the oxygen production and dwindling calories. At the beginning of cycle 19 it is time to recap. The spawn is built and vacuumed out, the piping has been finished and we are almost out of algae. We need to get this thing up and running quickly, otherwise the dupes will suffocate. And if that weren't enough, we have no more clean water for the food production. The quick pitcher pump setup we built can hopefully supply us with enough clean water for the mush bars to keep the dupes alive a bit longer until we can secure better food sources. Sources. Then in order to test if everything is okay with this Hydra, instead of going to some testing world, I just saved the game and in case something goes wrong, I reload at this point in time. This is when I noticed a fatal flaw in the hydrogen part of this bomb. Here at this point in the setup, a block is missing. This block will prevent the oxygen in the lower part from going anywhere, which means we have to get in there and fix it. Restarting a few seconds in the past, we can tackle the issue. This could be done by building a tile pocket filled with water and then removing the wall of the electrolyzer setup. All of this while the algae doom counter is running in the background. Then the dupes could walk in and add the tile. I closed the room back up again, saved the game and started the spawn module. Nice, the gas is separated perfectly. Oh, I just forgot to disconnect this pump here. But let's just use this occasion and check if the hydrogen is correctly picked up. It is. Now we can connect up the rest of the electrolyzers, activating this part of the spawn. We only did one part of the spawn and the other still needs to be fixed, hence the preparation to break in and fix that as well. Further down in the base I prevented the salt water from screwing up our electrolyzers and a desalinator was implemented into the filtration system. The rest of cycle 20 was spent repeating the spawn startup that you've already seen. In cycle 21 we finished the upper part as well. With that out of the way we are safe in regards to oxygen production at cycle 21. With this we are able to survive until we run out of clean water, salt water or polluted water. But Food is still an issue. We are back to 112,000 calories, which is nothing more than one cycle worth of food. Of course, depending on how much calories the dupes have left in their stomach, some of them would be able to survive for three cycles. But as soon as the starvation alarm goes off, the calories are somewhere between 700 and 900 calories. Taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, what did we achieve by building this bomb? Well, we freed up duplicate labor. We are no longer dependent on those hamster wheels here in the middle of the base, for example. Now we can spend our time on other things. A temporary food solution could be using the ice from the ice biome, melt it into clean water and then we can produce more mush bars. Cycle 22 and 23, collecting every bit of food, a worse soil and green and ranching prep. Time to free up more polluted water, add a second pump to increase the filtration rates, dig here to the right for whatever reason I can't remember and finally check the dirt that we have left. Well, we have only 4 tons left. Put up the doom counter again. It is time to doop up and eat the poop. We accumulated a true shitload of that. We do have 48 tons of polluted dirt that we could use. Let us swarm the base with composters and turn all of that unused real estate into new dirt and then fresh and warm mush bars. Dire situations call for dire actions. Let's also not ignore the Paco here. And while we are at it, algae can be turned into dirt as well. Or we can use the slime directly in our mushroom farm to create calories. We also have access to more clean water down here on the left, which, yes, will cook the base very quickly. But water isn't the issue at the moment. We have a measly 300 kilograms of dirt left. We do still have 99,000 calories, so cycle 23 will probably not 
be the doomsday, but 24 can be very well. Is this the end or can we keep going for a bit longer? Well, let's take a look at cycle 23 base. Nothing much has changed visually, except for my stress level when I was recording this, which is why I had to take a break and keep on going on the next day. It is the 10th of December and today we gotta take care of the food and dirt issues. After giving all the able-bodied duplicants the priority for ranching and allocating the saved up skill points into those areas, a few ranches have been laid out, dug out and prepared by the dupes. Cycle 23 ended with a digging order to maybe squeeze in a few more mushrooms. Then I queued the HVAC research, probably to conserve all the remaining food we have. Cycle 24, 25 and 26. The search for food, ranching and 100% stress. Cycle 24 started with the search for more dirt, making a little bit of meal lice and maybe even used a few seed wheat that we found from the frost biome to turn it into frost buns. But that doesn't keep us alive for long. We are down to a measly 24,000 calories. If the meal ice and meat gets turned into better food sources, we get more calories from them. So let's disallow every non-processed food for now. Then to prevent the yellow flood of the base, we might as well change the outhouses for lavatories. This way we are not using any dirt there and the dupes can still pee in peace. The excess water from this setup can be used in electrolyzers or somewhere else. Besides that, we found a few more grub fruit seeds. Not enough to fully sustain us, but better than nothing. Until then, collecting these beetles for the ranch, building even more composters and finishing the bathrooms all adds to the dupe's stress level. Cycle 25 is when the first dupe cracked. The very fittingly named Rampage couldn't take it anymore and was about to binge on our food reserves. Yes, he is a binge eater. Luckily, we realized that in time and locked him here in the stable. This could have been immediate death for the whole colliery when he would have arrived at the food reserves. Time for a quick solution. Dupes can be massaged into relaxation. That way we can prevent the stress reaction or at least delay them a while until the reason for the stress can be taken care of. Let's save this first before freeing Rampage. Be free my fellow stress dupe and immediately go to the massage room please. But it seems that our Rampage doesn't want to because our oxygen distribution is suboptimal. Okay, I quickly had to fix that and then I remembered that it might have been a good idea to check on Rampage. Good, he actually went and got a massage. We accumulated a few emergency rations over the time being, crawling here on the floor for example. Cycle 25 base is visible here. Down left in the base a quick priority setup for the power grid was implemented. Everything behind the transformer now has power for at least a few seconds longer than the rest of the grid, should it ever fail. In cycle 26 we noticed the effect the stress has on the dupes. The filters haven't been changed influencing the water filtration, food production and our oxygen setup. Good we have a hydra with a backup supply of oxygen. Another soon to be issue is the heat. Check out the farm tiles here. Nothing is growing anymore. Might be a good time to finally add a coal generator to the mix. As if we aren't screwed enough already. Down to the right the farm tiles are still not finished. 100 dupes and nothing gets done. Heck, the ranges are still not fully filled, but almost finished. Time to capture more bugs. Cycle 26 base is an ant farm for sure. Speaking of farming, time to root up those unnecessary plants. It also seems like we have another starving dupe. This time it is number 71. Though they seem fine to me. Cycle 27, 28 and 29. Slime lung, critter, power grid and composters. Before deciding the next step, let's quickly go through the overlays. We still have a safe oxygen supply, enough water, but the plants are stifling, meaning the base is slowly getting cooked and we seem to have slime lung in the base. Let us regain the material used to build the hamster wheel and then close that room off. Slime lung taken care of. Future me here, I don't think so. Meanwhile activate the third wrench and prepare a room for the fourth. We also uncovered this neural vessel later. If we are lucky we can send in Rampage and give him the sunny disposition, leading to a massive stress reduction. But no, he gets the regenerative trait, the most useless of the additional gained traits. At least we can rummage the lockers and maybe get a snazzy suit. We are still going strong. We gained a bit of dirt and have 47 tons of polluted dirt left. Water can be gained from building temp shift plate from the ice from the ice biome. And the marsh bar production is going smoothly, for now. The goal is still getting off of marsh bars as the main food source. Besides that, adding the smart battery to the coal generator helps us automate the power generation. Cycle 28. Cycle 28 started by securing more water, checking out this area here and collecting more seeds. We do also have this second neural vessel later. Let's get someone in there. Then I checked if all the food was properly grilled. It 
Partly was and expanded here to the left, allowing us to add two more hydrogen generators and grab a bit of gold amalgam. Right next to the area that we uncovered are four more beetles, a bit of meat and an egg. While the dupes dig their way to the beetles, which will hopefully help in our ranges, it is time for another ride on the neural vacillator. Isn't it rampage? And this time we actually got the sunny disposition. Huh. Nice. Up in the base the dupes got us the lovely critters for the ranches. In here is transporting a Sweetle. And while on their way throughout the base we pass a few passed out dupes. I think that speaks for the stress that they are having right now. Number 46 is starving and immediately grabs some barbecue. So spoiled. The rest of cycle 28 was used to prepare a better power grid. The idea behind this is to siphon off power from the generators to free up some duplicate labor. We need those buggers to wrench and collect materials. The wires and transformators have been built in cycle 29 and we even tried to add more coal generators and more composters. Our dirt is at 0 kg again and the polluted dirt is down to 42.9 tons. We might also need to stop the dupes from eating the mushrooms before we grill them at least. With those things built and a pretty strong oxygen level, we arrive at cycle 30. Now it is getting serious. In cycle 30 it finally clicked and I thought of shovels. Haven't thought of them until now. Let's see how many we have. A tip for you watching here. Go to the wrangle critter button and just drag it over the regolith area. This will give you an idea of how many shovels there are in your visible area. 16,000 calories per shovel by the way. That would be helpful if you manage to actually ranch them. If we can survive for that long. Well, let's give Rampage a snazzy suit, prepare the floor for a ranching area, uproot the stifled plants and replace them with more temperature resistant ones, if we do find more seeds. And let's not forget about catching those Sweetles, again, cause some of the dupes apparently dropped them for whatever reason. Good we checked down here, number 51 was really close to dying, but we did manage to save him in time. Cycle 30 ended with us finishing the smart batteries for the expanded power grid. Cycle 31 can be skipped. Why you may ask? Well, because of this. What no? Cycle 31. Again, I tried collecting all the critter eggs that I could find that are too much for our ranches to handle. I at least wanted them to hatch down here. We also have fish eggs, which is why I placed the rest of the eggs in the water under our pitcher pumps. I should have built a Paco range very early on. The excavation expansion gave us a bit of room to plant more mushrooms, provided we get more seeds. More eggs or critters could be helpful, so I decided to check the colony summary. An annoying while of achievements later, I checked how many wild critters the graph says there are. Not sure I got any smarter checking the graph, but I did look around and found two more Sweetles down to the left. At this moment in time, we only have a singular incubator hatching our eggs. I ended the cycle by checking in on the mushrooms and critter. Cycle 32 started with us adding more incubators, building a few farm tiles and grabbing a bit of copper from the printing pot. As you can see down here, we are out of mushroom seeds. No expansion of the farming area for us. I thought preparing a fridge area to preserve the accumulated food as long as possible was a good idea at that time. The results were mixed. A fifth ranch was more in terms of what we need. But was it already too late? Speaking of potentially fatal situations, we do have another starving dupe. Number 15 here could end this run at cycle 32. Let's see if we can get them fed in time. The food has been grabbed and dropped. The dupe is catching their breath and running away without a food. Let's see what happens next. Number 15 decided to grab a freshly baked mush fry, sneeze a little bit next to the sleeping McLim and finally munch on the mush bar. Probably contracting food poisoning or slime lung that we have in our base. When digging up the gold amalgam to the left I opened Pandora's box letting the slime lung course through our base. A quick fix could be placing body buds around the infected areas if it is not already too hot for the body buds to grow. Cycle 33 continued with egg collection with the goal of dropping them in the hatching area. Then at the end of cycle 33 I noticed a fatal flaw in our research system. No more novice research was possible because all of the dirt immediately goes to the food production which is a good place for the dirt but still. Cycle 34 and 35. I tried adding a pipe cooling system to the base in order to get more areas where we can restart our mule production. Which did come to a complete stop because of the heat. The food storage also progressed a little bit. Too little, too late? Cycle 35 was mostly wasted on building the fridge system and hand feeding the duplicates so they don't starve. The rest was used to try and capture some of the shovels, build a parkour range and then tap into or slaughter our emergency rations. Yep, 
this year. Cycle 36 starts with the critter's worst nightmare. In a desperate attempt to gain enough calories to build a functioning food and agriculture or ranching system, many dupes had to be selectively fed by activating the available food resources only for them, which is super laggy and a pain in the butt. But we did manage to finish the weird food storage though, and that without losing any duplicates. Still, how unnecessary. We also build a mess hall. Cycle 37, more critter genocide and a desperate attempt to build a shovel ranch. Well, it is hard to capture those buggers. We did manage to capture two shovels, only for me to realize that not every door can keep them in place. And I built four of those freaking shovel ranches already. I mean in my other videos, not here. But somehow I still don't remember the facts when I need them. Gotta capture those escapees again. Cycle 38. The last chance for the shovels to be captured and placed in a ranch before we make them to barbecue. You either reproduce or be produce. Midway through cycle 38 I escaped again. The dupes ran out of obsidian, which I planned tiles out of, so they should have been hard enough. But midway building they ran out of the material, so they used a soft material and the walls could escape. Is this the capture attempt number 3 or 4? Does it even matter anymore? Can we save this by sacrificing half of the shovels to domesticate the rest? I mean can we feed the dupes long enough for us to actually produce a proper stable? I'm not sure. Speaking of the rest, the dupes are busy wrangling them. While that happens, two dupes are starving. We do have enough calories to save 64 more duplicates. But was that a freaking death sound? Shit. <laughs> Shit. Number 34 got trapped in space. Now we can't even try to rescue the rest. No. I mean, I mean, this was a lost cause for the last 10 cycles or so, I'm not really sure. Should have started the ranching much earlier and the fish and the shovels. That number 34 got trapped in space, that's just unfortunate. 100 dupes, 38 cycles, not very catchy. 100 dupes, how long can you survive? Yes, that may work. <laughs> Now you know the title. As you see, a lot has gone wrong. Let's recap. Brainstorming for tips so other people can get better. Immediately start with food, otherwise your dupes will die at cycle 7 to 9. Dirt is also needed for research, try to remember that. Immediately build a Paco range when you can, if your research allows it, not sure. Research is the limiting factor because you can't go into the higher tiers while playing this because the dupes are just missing the skill points. Don't use much bars for too long, it uses up too much dirt and too much water. Go into farming, but you will run out of seeds before having all the dupes fed. Start with the cooling early, if you can get into any kind of cooling that is. The Hydra worked wonders. <coughs> if you find any shovels, try and capture them as early as you can and start ranching them. If you are wondering what happened to the rest of the base, I had it run to cycle 45 and we still do have 94 duplicates left. I do think that this challenge is possible if you start ranching early on. Get lucky with the seeds and start taming a few of those water geysers if you find any method of cooling and condensing the water down, that is. Maybe you can use the many ice biomes to your advantage. By the way, if you enjoyed this, I would love for you to leave a like, cause this took me around 2 weeks of playtime and 2 months to edit. Love you guys and Luma out. Comparable challenges are to the top left and my highly edited let's play on the top right. I actually did record this last year November to December by the way. 